Well, thank you. Um, it's great to see you all. That was a terrific meal uh, that, we just, um, that we just had. Um, and Thibault and I go way back to some uh, days doing some research at uh, Mondavi Winery, where we ended up, um, among other things, publishing a paper showing a very nice relationship between high-resolution airborne uh, NDVI and uh, ground-shaded area. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is some, uh, it's, a, it's a proof of concept system that we've built as a result of uh, some grant-funded research funded uh, federally by the uh, NASA Applied Sciences Program, uh, as well as by various DWR and various other uh, state agencies. And um, the idea here has been to combine um, uh, free Earth resource satellite imagery with CIMIS reference evapotranspiration, uh, uh, combining that with uh, generally accepted agricultural relationships regarding uh, crop water use estimation. And most of those relationships are coming out of, for instance, for those of you who might be familiar with it, the FAO 56 uh, crop water requirement uh, guidelines and various other uh, equations that um, uh, uh, agricultural, uh, the uh, agricultural engineering community has has uh, put together and uh, published over the last um, couple of decades. Um, and so the basic uh, cascade of, of data that we're going to be talking about is uh, starting with NDVI, which is a, a spectral, it's a remote sensing, most of you are probably familiar with it, it's a remote sensing spectral index that is sensitive to uh, the uh, uh, canopy vigor, green canopy vigor. Um, uh, a, and uh, converting that to green fractional cover, and then to basal crop coefficient, and then combining that with the uh, uh, spatial CIMIS, the two kilometer gridded um, product for California for daily uh, basal crop evapotranspiration. And then I, I should also uh, mention that the basal crop coefficient that we're talking about here is maybe slightly different than uh, what Thibault was talking about a little bit earlier, and that the satellite is going to Pick a, it's going to be a crop coefficient for anything growing in the field. So if you've got cover crop, weeds, grass, anything green that's growing down there, it's going to, be, it's going to pick that up. So if, if it's a clean cultivated crop, then it should be fairly close to just that, that water requirement of the vines that um, uh, Thibault was talking about. Uh, but if there's other grass cover down there, then that could either be an opportunity or a, or a limitation for you. It could be an opportunity uh, in the sense of... Uh, uh, getting a handle on how much water is being pulled out of your soil. The satellite systems that we're talking about, it, it's true that these are um, maybe not super high resolution. It's, uh, it's, uh, they're actually higher than some of the other satellite systems that are, that are out there. Uh, we're using Landsat, which in the remote sensing community is frequently considered a fairly high resolution sensor. It's about a quarter acre resolution, so it's not what you're used to seeing when you look at at Google Earth or something like that. Um, and it might not be super useful for managing by the vine, but quarter acre could be pretty good for managing, uh, managing an overall field that's, say, at least a few to several acres in size. So our main workhorse has been the uh, Landsat system. Currently, uh, it was a, uh, it's a long legacy system, first launched um, in the 1970s. And currently, we're using Landsat 7 and Landsat 8 quarter acre resolution and, and with an eight day revisit. And then we're currently in the process of incorporating, we and many other remote sensing groups in the, in the world are in the process of, of uh, incorporating some additional uh, free or open, open data uh, policy uh, 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 another, from another system called Sentinel-2. So there's two of those flying, and those are, I'm saying a tenth of an acre resolution. It's actually finer. I was looking this morning. It's actually quite a bit. It's finer than that. It's about 10 meter by 10 meter resolution on this uh, with a five-day revisit. So, um, so by incorporating Sentinel into our system, uh, we're hoping to get many more uh, frequent updates with the satellite observations. So our system looks, um, looks something like this. Uh, here, uh, uh, out in the ocean here, this little cascade here, this is the four um, data sets that it puts out, the NDVI, the green fractional cover, the basal crop coefficient, and the crop evapotranspiration. Um, and um, it's built on top of the Google uh, API, so it's very easy to, to search for 
uh, a given uh, location, either by a name or a road intersection or an address or a latitude longitude. Very easy to, to, zoom, to zoom in on your field, and you can use various uh, Google overlays in the background, either the satellite or the map. I'm just showing the map here. And so overlaid on this in the blue shading is, is our uh, uh, basal crop evapotranspiration for this particular day, which is June 6, uh, 2018. And we're basically, current, at the current time, we're mapping uh, uh, pretty much all of the Central Valley, the North Coast, and the, the Central Coast, about 8 million acres altogether. Uh, and one, uh, one thing uh, to note also is that um, temporarily, for those of you who might be trying to pull it up on your phones or your tablets as we sit here, the, 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 it's not currently enabled on, on mobile devices, so you'll need to... Uh, use a laptop or, or a desktop to actually uh, get our uh, site. And I hope you can see our, uh, the URL is kind of on the bottom there. It may be a little bit hard for you, um, uh, for you, some of you to see. Uh, so anyway, this is a problem that we will be uh, addressing uh, shortly in the next uh, few weeks. So just keep that in mind. And so what you can do, uh, we're just looking at the Google satellite here, and so what you can do is uh, uh, zoom into a field of interest. And so here we're looking, uh, I picked a field from the UC uh, Oakville Experimental Station. And um, you'll, it, it presents a, uh, uh, this, this pop-up here, and through with the data services, this is what I'd call point and click, um, you're then able to uh, look uh, to extract any uh, extract a time series either either as a graph or as a comma separated values that you can then pop into a spreadsheet of of any of the sims uh, um, variables the NEVI fractional cover basal crop coefficient and uh, the the crop ET and you can do that uh, for any uh, calendar year going back to uh, 2010 so all you have to do is sort of select and um, and pick there. And so this is an example of a, uh, both a graphical and a spreadsheet output from that. So the graph is showing the, um, the crop evapotranspiration. The range there is from 0 to 4 tenths of an inch. So that's the daily crop evapotranspiration um, uh, for that Landsat pixel, for that quarter acre um, part of that uh, few acre field. Um, and then on the right is an example of the, uh, the, the comma-separated values. So there, uh, the left-hand column is, is each day of the year, and the right-hand column is, again, the, the basal crop evapotranspiration in, um, uh, in inches. And then uh, we also have uh, developed a, an application programming interface so that third-party software clients can um, extract any of those uh, data from our uh, archive. And a, a, a current thing that we have is a, uh, it's currently being used, for instance, by the Crop Manage uh, Decision Support System, which is a cooperative extension system for fresh vegetables, uh, mostly, in the, mostly in, uh, on the central coast. So they extract our fractional cover to help them uh, uh, adjust their evapotranspiration estimates for those, those particular crops. So this is a little bit more. You can, you can keyboard this in, uh, but it's really easier to point and click if you're just interested in getting a little bit of data here and there. Uh, it's really made a little bit more from machine to machine. So if uh, there's a, uh, uh, the outside client will automatically send a request to, um, to our system and then can then extract um, uh, data from the system. So we're very interested in supporting um, uh, uh, third-party uh, clients um, if any of these data sets are, are of interest. And so it's a da the data service, the variable, the location, the crop type, uh, and the date. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we have developed a, a, an iRequest uh, uh, post pro what I'd call a post processor for uh, SIMS, and so this will in, right now it's, it's, a, it's a spreadsheet. It's currently being turned into a little bit more user-friendly um, uh, 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 web system. Uh, but what your request does is it takes the, the basal crop coefficient, 
from the uh, from sims, and then it calculates the the effects of evaporation from the soil and uh, uh, stomata regulation uh, uh, as a result of uh, deficit irrigation, both of which affect ET in opposite uh, directions. Uh, so it'll calculate the the evaporation coefficient and the stress, the, something called the stress coefficient, which is similar to this water deficit index, uh, I believe, that Thibault has been describing off and on today. Uh, and it will come up with a daily uh, crop evapotranspiration. And then, uh, it, and this would be, instead of a basal, then this would be what is sometimes called an actual, with air quotes, actual evapotranspiration. Um, and it will also calculate certain water use fractions that can be used to, water use fractions that can be used to quantify uh, the efficiency of your on-farm on uh, uh, water um, applications. And so one of those is the crop consumptive use fraction, which is basically the, uh, like it says, it's the consumptive use divided by your total applied water. It can also uh, account for other use, other beneficial uses of water, such as uh, leaching or climate control, <clears throat> um, and that's incorporated as something called the agronomic water use fraction. And finally, it will also do if there are any uh, set asides of the, the water, either by permit or voluntarily through um, uh, uh, for, for an environmental uses. Uh, then that can be something called the total water use fraction. So these are three use fractions that. Department of Water Resources is, um, is um, interested in. And again, the, the uh, URL for this is uh, kind of low here on the slide. I'm sorry I didn't put that up higher. So you can get it at this spreadsheet and um, uh, also some help files. And if anybody has a chance to test drive it, I would be um, uh, uh, interested to hear your, your thoughts on that. Um, and then, uh, this is the final slide, but uh, by way of a little bit more of a glimpse of the future, a, a large new effort that, we're, that our team is currently involved with, along with uh, uh, five or six other uh, remote sensing uh, evapotranspiration modeling teams is called OpenET. And um, this is, a, this is a, a few year project, and the main goal here is to, is to uh, uh, improve, uh, increase the the availability of and the accessibility to um, evapotranspiration data. And uh, the idea there is to support um, farm management, which is mostly what we're talking about here today, um, but as well to uh, support uh, water market trading, uh, uh, supply chain issues, as well as um, uh, groundwater monitoring. So this is um, the... Uh, the URL is a little tiny thing up there, but it's etdata.org, and um, that'll talk about the various uh, various team members. So we're so we on the on the Sims project are collaborating uh, uh, with that, and ultimately there will be an ensemble of um, uh, uh, model results that are available uh, for people to look at. Some of which uh, are generated by some of the a little bit more sophisticated energy balance uh, remote sensing uh, methods. So that's, that's kind of what's, uh, what's coming along. So with that, I will stop and be happy to answer any questions if there, we have a minute or two. Mm. 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 Yes, what are the costs associated with using your service? Uh, there's no, uh, no cost on, on, yeah, associated with our service. At the same time, it is a grant funded, and so at, at the moment, uh, so we make a best efforts basis to keep it up up to speed up 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 to date. And currently, uh, we uh, in fulfilling some of our other program responsibilities, we've fallen a little bit behind. So the most recent data you'll find in there is from uh, uh, July of 2018. But we're in the process of bringing that fairly close to up to date um, once. Um, uh, once the government, uh, once NASA reopens, and we can, we can get back into the to the servers there, <laughs> so yeah, no, no cost. And yes, sir. That is, yeah, that's that's an excellent question, and that we're we're keenly sensitive that that is 
something that for, for real-time irrigation management, that's a really important aspect. And we're working, we're, we're aware of that. We're working very hard towards that. Um, we have had trouble getting a little more up-to-date than just like a few days behind. And uh, in these, with Landsat, for instance, you can get yesterday's Landsat image today, um, but it's not going to be atmospherically uh, corrected. And so that atmosphere can, it's kind of a remote sensing detail, but it can add some confusion and noisiness to the imagery. So we would really like to be able to do atmospheric correction. And for that, we need some other data sets that are not always available in real time. And so, but we have one or two workarounds for that, for doing like an approximate atmospheric correction. So we're, we're working very hard to, to make it something that would be a, a, a 24 hour system. And I think with, with, the, with the etdata.org, that's, that's, a, that's a goal there. And so at the moment, it's both SIMS and AirQuest are a little bit more useful for looking retrospectively, maybe comparing years, that sort of thing. Um, but going forward, that's where the community is aware of that, and uh, the remote sensing community is aware of that, and we're we're um, working on that very hard. Um, write a program that's specific for their farm, and and try to mine the data from that when this comes real time. Yes, yeah. So if anybody who is interested in doing that or maybe works with a crop consultant that's got their own, own thing, um, uh, you know, have them talk to us. We, we're happy to share the, the details on the, uh, on the application programming interface and how to, how to um, uh, hook into that. Great. Thank you very much.